Hi there, friends. Another fantastic recipe today. A panko custard mahi on top of a mashed potato with a beur rouge. Stay tuned. I'm going to show you exactly how to make it. Remember, you like the show? Give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to ring the bell so you get a notification every Thursday when I put up a new video. Stay tuned. I'm going to show you exactly how to make this amazing fish. All right, friends. I'm going to show you how easy it is to make this fish. Delicious. Uh, all my recipes are delicious, and they're easy. If they were difficult, I wouldn't be doing it. Fresh fish is the key, and we're gonna do a mahi with a red wine sauce. Fish doesn't have to go with white wine. It could go with red wine, and it's delicious. This is gonna be delicious. Let's look at our fish. We have a mahi mahi. Uh, people call it dolphin. It's got nothing to do with the dolphin. It's a mahi mahi, that's what it's called. And, uh, and, and it runs wide right here in, in the coast of Florida, and it's beautiful. And I want to show you, look, look, look at beautiful red. Look, 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 look at the color of this fish, friends. It's beautiful red. If you go to the fishmonger and this part right there of the fish is like brown or, or, or dark red, like a purple looking, maybe you have chicken that day or you buy another kind of fish. And no smell. If it smells like fish, it's fishy. This will smell fishy tomorrow. Uh, and, and, and the day after, it's going to start being fishy. You... Cook the fish the day you get it. The day they cut it, you got to eat it. All right? Let me sanitize my hand. I got my sanitized rag here. For those of you that have never been to my channel, I have a, a, about a, a quarter of an ounce per gallon of water, and uh, this allows me to have sanitized hands. So let's prepare the fish, and then we're going to get with the sauce. So maybe you know what I'll do? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll start the sauce going, and then we'll get to the fish. And the sauce is very simple. For the sauce got butter. <laughs> Remember, it's a bird. Beurre rouge, that means uh, red butter sauce. We're going to cook this, and then we're going to put uh, some shallots, and we're going to put some fresh tarragon. Tarragon is a uh, wonderful herb. I love it. You don't have tarragon. You could use sage. You could use oregano. You could use whatever you want. This is probably one of the easiest herbs in the world uh, to, to uh, uh, stem off. You got to get rid of the stem. The stem is not so good. So what you do, friends, you take the, the, the herbs like you do for rosemary and you pull on the other side of the stem and you keep the stem. When you get to the end, you may want to pull it. But the stem is not too bad. What you should do for educate your palate. Try to eat this. And then you'll see why you want to get rid of it, okay? Because this doesn't taste so good, okay? So you want to get rid of it. So you take it and... To give it a fine chop. Very simple, eh? Nothing fancy. We don't do anything fancy around here, friends, right? And here we got a fresh herb right there. And uh, my recipe police is going to say he's using his knife, so I'm trying not to use it. <laughs> You're supposed to use a scraper. So, Jean Pierre, don't violate the rules, otherwise, they're going to put you in a doghouse. So, here we go. Let me put this right there, and voila. Oh, mamma mia. Put some shallots in there. You see, this stove is going pretty fast. I'm going to lower it a little bit. All right. Shallots cooking in butter. Oh, actually, anything cooking in butter is fine with me. I love butter. So <laughs> if you're new to the channel, you don't, you, you, you're going to be surprised a little bit, but don't be. Because butter is good for us, friends. We're going to cook this butter sauce, and it's going to be amazing. But first, let's let get those shallots to render. I'm going to put a balsamic vinegar. If you don't have a balsamic vinegar, then use a regular vinegar, but then you're going to be a little tart, so you're going to have to reduce it. I'm using an 18-year-old balsamic vinegar, which makes it really easy. But before I do this, I want to make sure that I really, really caramelize my shallots. Really, really, really caramelize the shallots. So they're sweet. If you don't have shallots, you can use onion. And it'll be perfectly fine with the onion, as long as you caramelize the onion just as well, okay? We're going to take the sauce now, and we're going to put a little bit of balsamic vinegar. And then we're going to use port wine. Now, port wine is a fortified wine, mostly made in Portugal. Portugal, what a beautiful area in the world. If you've never been to Portugal, oh, not only is the wine they make there, but the people are lovely. So, uh, we got the, um, uh, the vinegar, and like I said, this is 18-year-old balsamic vinegar, which means it has already lost most of its acidity. I don't need to reduce it. 
If you have a, um, a vinegar that is young vinegar, then you may have to reduce it a little more to get it all sweeter. And then we're going to put the port wine. If you don't have port wine, you can use a regular red wine, but then you'll have to reduce it. You'll have to reduce it. A be the beautiful thing about a port wine is a fortified wine. You don't need to reduce it when you cook. You don't need to get rid of the alcohol. Quite the contrary, you want to keep it in there. So we're going to bring this to boil, and then we are going to... Uh, we are going to uh, prepare the fish. We're going to put the sauce right there. We're going to let it reduce on its own, okay? So we're going to move it right there. And then we're going to be concerned about the fish. We're going to do the fish in a minute. All right? So, so far, the sauce is down. Oh, you know what, what I do? I'm talking blah, 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 blah. And I forgot to put the tag on. That's okay. Better late than ever. <laughs> Thank goodness. I thought. I just, see, that's why I leave them here. That's why I like my mise en place, because I don't forget nothing. I don't know about you, but it happens to me to forget things. <laughs> Too often, you would think after so many years in a business, it doesn't happen to me, but still it does. Now let's do the fish, friends. I want to show you a really cool technique. Let me clean my cutting board. Uh, I'm going to show you something really cool with the fish. Here, my, you know, you can put a, a coating on the fish. Let me try to do it where you guys can see what I'm doing. Take the bottle out of the way. All right, I got everything right here out of the way. I'm comfortable. All right, so what do I got here? I got panko and herb de Provence. Sometimes I do it with panko and coconuts. Matter of fact, I'm going to do a snapper with panko and coconuts, and you'll see it's really nice. Panko, now panko is very coarse, so you know what I do? I take my panko and I put it in a food processor, and I add a little bit of herb de Provence, dry herb de Provence. It's wonderful. You can use... Uh, uh, panko and, 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 and dry herbs. You don't have to get them from Provence. But I'm from Provence. That's where I'm from, from Aix-en-Provence. So I use the herbs. Every time I go to France, I bring a suitcase of herbs to Provence. I'm always afraid of the big old dog is going to get me at the custom. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> so I'm going to put the coating on this, folks, but I'm only going to do it on one side. I'm going to put the bread uh, according only on one side. So I showed you two or three ways to cut the fish. You can do it in a portion size. You know, it might be a little small for some people. You can do a little bigger size if you want. Or you can do it in medallions also. I like it in medallions. But either way, we're going to do it only on one side. So we put it in flour. And then we put it in egg. And then we put it in a breadcrumb. Okay? Why are we putting it in flour first? Because the egg doesn't stick on a wet surface. Egg does not stick on a wet surface. So if you don't want to put the flour, make sure you really, really dry that. Very good pepper towels, okay? Let's get a fry pan ready to saute those fish. First thing we're going to do is we're going to get the heat going. And I'm going to use some butter olive oil. You can use clarified butter, but we're not going to be in a pan long enough to worry about burning the butter. So we could use regular butter as well. But the butter olive oil is, is a little higher smoke point than butter. Butter burns at 250. I need to get at least to 350. So let's see how that's doing right there. It's reducing. It's doing quite well. That's exactly the way I want to do it. And then we're going to strain this, and we're going to finish it up with butter. Yep. Yep, yep. Butter, butter. Let's check it here to make sure we have about 350 degrees temperature. I don't want to put it in a cold olive oil, okay? I really don't want to put it. I want to put it about 350 because if I put it in a cold olive oil, I'm going to have a saggy breadcrumb and that's the last thing in the world I want is a saggy breadcrumb. I want it to be crispy and the best way to do that is to make sure it's about 350, 375. You know, if you want to fry something correctly, you got to make sure your oil is hot, right? That's what we're doing here. We're pan frying it really quick, breadcrumb, but we got to make sure it's at the right temperature, all right? So, if you go cold, yeah, it'll work if you go cold, but it'll get soggy. I don't want to be soggy. I want to be a nice, crispy crust, all right? We're going to put a little bit of salt and pepper. Now, I forgot to tell you, but I put salt and pepper in the flour, and I put salt and pepper in the, in the breadcrumbs as well, and salt and pepper in the egg. You probably saw that, the salt and pepper in the egg. You couldn't see it probably in the flour, yeah, but you could see it there. And then I'm putting a little more salt and pepper there, okay? So now we should be about at the right temperature. You can kind of smell it, really, especially when you're using a really high-quality bottle of olive oil like we're using right now. So we're going to do the three of them. Look, we put them in. Don't touch them. That's the secret. <laughs> There's no secret. 
I'm only I'm using that word secret all the time, but there's no secret. This is all it is. So we're gonna put a little more salt and pepper on the other side. Let's make sure that all of already moves around. I don't know if it's my stove that is crooked or if it's my fry pan that is crooked, but it doesn't look like it's coating the whole thing. Let me put the fish in your oven. I can't stand having fish at room temperature or chicken at room temperature. I can't stand to have any of that stuff. It has to be cold at all time unless I'm ready to eat it, unless I'm ready to cook it. A little more salt and pepper. There you go. So when we add it, put just a little bit more salt and pepper in there. All right, so now I got a cookie sheet ready to go with a seal pad, and we're going to put it on here. We're going to cook on a seal pad. It's easier. Let's check. It's going to go pretty fast. Sometime I make a pistachio custard. It goes even faster. You see? Look, look, look. Look how pretty that is, friends. Look. You see? Now, we know it's not cooked. You see how pretty that is? How cool is that? You like? Make sure it's nice. Just a little bit. We want to get just a little golden brown. And you see, it really took a second. I'm turning this off. So I don't have to worry about it no more. Look, look how pretty that is, friends. You see? You got a nice golden brown right here. We don't want, I don't know why this side of the pan is hotter than this one. <laughs> we technically challenge. But we'll get there. We'll get there, I promise you. We'll get there. You see? Now, you can do it on the side if you want. I just think it's more delicate. Fish is so delicate to begin with. Okay, look. What do you think? I think I like it. I hope you like it too. Okay, because it's very nice. So now, friends, very simple. I mean, a child could do this. We're going to take this, and we're going to pop them in the oven, and we're going to cook them. All right? And it's going to take a little while, but not that long. In the meantime, we're going to finish the sauce. And I'm going to serve it with a, uh, I'm going to put a little bit of a, I, I have a little bit of sauce. I'm going to put just a little bit of chicken stock in there, friends. Just a little bit to give me a little more volume, okay? I got a couple of like uh, four or five ounces of chicken stock. And then I'm going to finish this sauce now. And now what I like to do with this sauce, friends, I like to strain it. I like to get rid of all the solids. So then we have a, um, a, a nice smooth sauce. So we're going to take a strainer. And then we're going to take another pot. You know, I'm lucky because I got pots. I got lots of pots. <laughs> I got lots of pots. So we're going to take this. We're going to begin right here. All right? It's going to be right here. We're going to strain it, and we're going to finish the sauce in here. And you know what I like to do? Yeah, you can thicken it with butter, but there's quite a bit of sauce right there, friends. And if I were to thicken, the fish is cooking, so I got a few minutes, right? And I got this... Uh, so I'm going to bring this to boiler, then I'm going to strain it. But first I'm going to thicken slightly, just slightly, just ever so slightly. You can reduce it. You can reduce it, but what happens is if you reduce it, you don't have much of a sauce left, friends. If you reduce it too much, you don't have much of a sauce left. So what I like to do, I like to thicken it just slightly with a bit of cornstarch or arrowroot or tapioca powder. A little thickener, just a little bit, just a little bit left. And then, and then, friends... We're going to add the butter. Because right now, if you wanted to thicken this, if you look at the volume in here that I have here, if you want to thicken this, let me just turn this on. If you wanted to thicken this with butter, you could do it. But this would take a pound of butter. And I know some of you are going to think a pound of butter is a little overdoing. <laughs> All right, so we're going to reduce this. But we're going to put a little bit of thickener first. Okay, just a little bit of thickener while the fish is cooking. Okay, so it's not like we're not doing anything. We're going to get a whisk. Some people don't believe that I got 30 whisk. I do. I got it. Look, I'll show you. This, this is my whisk draw. Yeah, I, got, I don't know what the potato I is doing in there, but this is my whisk draw. <laughs> it's my whisk draw. So I got a lot of whisk. You know, you got to have a whisk for everything. <laughs> you got to have a whisk for everything. So good. I got... <laughs> And one day I'll show you my knife drawer. My knife drawer is in there. Uh, my knife drawer is beautiful, friends. Look, look, we're going to thicken it just a little bit. I got a little bit of cornstarch right here, just a little bit. You notice I'm, those pans move on, on this stove just a little bit, okay? I don't want to put it too much, just a little bit. Just a little, little, little bit. I want it to be a little glaze. Because like I said, I could reduce it, but then I'll have no sauce left. All right, so here we go. 
Now we're going to strain all this. We don't need all that stuff, friends. What do we need all that for? We don't need all this, right? No, we don't. We don't need all that. Look at this. You see, this is going to make a beautiful sauce, friends. You watch. Especially after I'm going to add the butter to it. You see, look. It's a very, very fine strainer. I could have used a chinois, but this was more handy. But normally I would use a chinois. So it's uh, easier to use. I mean, um, uh, thinner of a mesh. But this is already nice. You see, look, look. Look how beautiful that looks, friends. Let's turn the heat off, okay? We don't need the heat no more. You see already? Look at beautiful consistency we have. Look how gorgeous that is. You see? And this, believe it or not, is going to be quite amazing for our fish. Now, let me just make some room here, friends. Because as you can see, I got lots of stuff in here. Right? I don't need this anymore. All I need now is this and this. I haven't told you about this first. So you probably don't know what's in here. Well, look, look at the sauce. You see the sauce, how beautiful that looks, folks? Look at this. And then I'm going to put the butter in there. And let me tell you. <laughs> now, look. This is just the mashed potatoes. Uh, when I'm making my mashed potato in advance, I got a hot water. Woo! I got a hot water in there. And I put my mashed potato in there. And I use this silicone thing, silicone mat. This silicone mat, look, look how strong that is. This actually could grab the bowl. It does. Look, it's full. A mashed potatoes, and it's grabbing the bowl. I'm not going to play with it because it's probably going to. But look how cool that is. You ever put something in the fridge? You just put this on top of it, and it sticks to it, just like that. How cool is that? It's pretty cool, isn't it? So anyway, I, I make a mashed potato in advance. Then I put it in here, and I keep it warm. This is my mashed potato. You've seen the mashed potato recipe. If you haven't, go to that website. Uh, no, go to our YouTube channel. Go into Essential. And then you see the mashed potatoes. It's very simple. It's potato and butter. A lot of people say, why can't you not put milk? You don't need milk in a mashed potato. You got enough milk product in your butter. Cream, you can put cream if you want to mix it heavy. I think just butter is all you really need. And we do garlic. We poach garlic with the potato at the same time. So go watch that video. It's a fabulous video. You, you know, everybody knows how to make mashed potato. Everybody makes them their way. Mine is no, mine is very good. I love it. The way I make it, it's very simple. Everybody can make it. I use it a potato rice. As a matter of fact, that's the thing I took out right there. If you've seen my video, you've probably seen this guy. This is fabulous. It's a great tool. You make a mashed potato with this, you'll never go back to, to one of them. <laughs> I promise you. All right. So now the fish, the thickness of the fish is probably going to take a, a total of uh, seven, eight minutes. Total. So we're going to wait a couple of minutes, and we'll be right back when the fish is ready, okay? So don't, don't go anywhere. Just come back in a few minutes. All right, folks. The fish is going to be ready in a few seconds. Let me prepare my plate. All I'm going to do with the plate, folks, is I am going to put a little bit of butter. <laughs> a little bit of butter in the plate, in the sauce, okay? At this point, the heat is off. Right there, we can see then the butter is melting beautiful. And, uh, and the heat is off. I don't want the butter to separate. Remember, the minute you put the butter, friends, do not, do not, do not, do not continue cooking it. Otherwise, your butters will separate, okay? I got this plate right there. I'm going to put a little bit of sauce in the bottom. That's it, just a little bit in the bottom. I'm going to take the fish out so I don't overcook it. Because the last thing we want to do is overcook the fish, my friends. Okay, we're going to put the fish right there. Not worry about the fish for a second. We're going to put that sauce right there. We're going to take a little bit of the mashed potatoes. Take a little scoop of mashed potatoes. Let me get, here you go. Make sure it's nice and clean. Little scoop of mashed potatoes. Make sure I pack it up really, really good, okay? You take it and you pack it up really, really good, okay? If you don't pack it up really good, then you're gonna have a, when you put your fish on it, it's not gonna stay nice and whole, you see? Take it right there, so it's kinda like an ice cream scoop. Yeah, it didn't clean up really good, but it's okay, right? Then, and then we're gonna take our fish, and we're gonna put it right on top of it. Now you can put one, two, three, four pieces of fish, however you want, but it's more delicate 
right there, just a very simple little dish. You can make it more fancy. You can put six, three, six, seven pieces of fish. I just think it's more delicate, just plain like this. And the fish, my friend, is delicate, it's delicious, and it's so elegant. Remember, if you just put it on one side, it's more elegant. You can do that. Don't be afraid to serve red wine with this. It'll be absolutely delicious. All right, I almost forgot to eat it. I will show you the inside. Look at it. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. You see how flaky that is here, friends? Look how flaky that is. That is delicious. That is, look at this. You see? Flaky. Look at this with the sauce right here on the mashed potatoes. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> wow. Friends, this is fish cooked mm, at perfection. Perfection. Remember, make that recipe. You're going to love it. It's delicious. Mm. Mm. I hope you like this recipe. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to ring the bell so you get a notification every Thursday when I put up a new recipe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.